Sakim, we're live. Thank you. Well, sergeants, begin your recording. PC recording is underway. Cloud recording is up. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Sergeant Leonardo, you may begin with the opening. Good morning and welcome to the New York City Remote Council hearing for the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. At this time, we ask that all council staff turn on the video for verification purposes. To minimize disruption, please place all cell phones and electronic devices to silent or vibrate. Thank you, Mr. Chair, we're ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, good morning. I'm Council Member I. Denise Miller, uh, Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Today, we will be voting on two important pieces of legislation uh, related to retirement, private retirement savings plan, proposed intro 888, sponsored by uh, Council Member Kalos, would establish a retirement savings program for self-employed individuals and employees of private entities. Proposed intro 901, uh, introduced by myself, would establish a re retirement savings board to oversee the city's retirement savings plan program, established in intro 888. For these same employees and individuals. Together, both of the bills will go a long way towards expanding retirement benefits coverage for the city's private workforce. Retirement savings plans are essential to, to the way workers retain financial security when they exit the workforce. These plans are most frequently joined as part of, of individuals' employee benefits. They are allowed employees to contribute a given amount of their income to a pension fund um, then it, uh, it becomes available to them once they start working. As of July 2019, there are over 4 million private sector jobs in New York City, and a substantial number of them lack any sort of retirement coverage. In fact, in 2016 report found that only one third of all workers 25 to 64 in the city of New York were participated in an employer sponsored work retirement plan at all. The two bills that are in committee that we're hearing today would work to expand retirement benefits for workers that are currently lacking this regard. Proposed 888 would create a mandatory auto enrollment IRA program for employers who have five or more employees and do not currently offer a retirement savings program. My bill 901 would create a three person board to oversee the implementation of this program. The board would consist of three mayoral appointees who would be tasked with responsibilities such as determining the date of the program, entering into contracts with financial institutions and administrators, establishing the process for employees to leave the program or individuals to join the program, conducting education and outreach to employers and employees. The board would also work with the comptroller on investment strategies and policies. Although this legislation would take effect 90 days from the passage of the bill, the board itself would have up to two years to implement the retirement savings program. While public sector employees are usually automatically enrolled in retirement programs as mandated by law, the same protections do not extend to those in the private workforce. So it is important to note that these bills are not binding on workers. They merely grant eligibility, eligible employees and in individuals an extra option to participate in a flexible retirement savings program while at work. As such, proposed intro 888 and 901 attempt to cover a large gap in the city's workforce who don't have an employee-sponsored employee -sponsored retirement program. It's important to offer the city's private employees this option to save, the to save for the future, especially given the financial insecurities that we are facing right now. I urge all my colleagues here, both in committee and, and in the general body to support this legislation. I'd like to thank my staff, uh, Chief of Staff, Ali Vasunajad, John Wani, uh, Jake, Joe Goldblum, and committee uh, staff, Nuzat, Tom, and Nevin. Also I'd like to thank my former uh, legislative director, uh, Brandon, um, for the work that he has done on this legislation as well. Uh, I'd like to, Recognize my colleagues that are here today, Council Members Moya, Lewis, Adams. I'd like to welcome Council Member Denowitz. 
and uh, I think Council Member Orridge, Orridge is somewhere around. Uh, so with that, and Council Member Rosenthal, that I'd like to uh, give the sponsor of intro 888. I see that Council Member Kalos is on board this morning. I'd like to give him an opportunity to speak to his legislation. Council Member Kalos. Good morning. New Yorkers should have a right to retire. With 4 million workers in New York City, one of the wealthiest cities in the world, with millionaires and billionaires, two thirds of our workers don't have access to retirement plan through their employers. Uh, passing these introductions to create retirement security for all will do just that and help between one and a half million and two million New Yorkers have access to retirement. Uh, I'm Before I became a city council member, uh, I worked as an ERISA attorney dealing with employee retirement. And this is something I've been working on for uh, quite a while, long before I was a, a council member. And one of the reasons I actually ran for office is because in the Delphi bankruptcy, GM spun off its failing auto parts, paid its uh, executives with golden parachutes in the millions, and then said they couldn't pay their employees' retirement accounts. And that was wrong. And we need to stabilize people's ability to retire. And so we've been working on this. Uh, Chair Danique Miller actually held the first hearing on this topic uh, in the city council uh, to do a study on the issue. And as they did the study, we found that we could do this. He did this working with our public advocate, Tish James. And Tish James actually authored uh, both of these bills in concert with the city council. And uh, when, when we, we lost her to the Attorney General's office, we couldn't be happier. And the two of us have been working together uh, to carry this legislation and to get it across the finish line. I will tell you, it has been a, a long and sordid trip. Uh, the ERISA re regulations don't prevent this. Uh, that being said, we still had to work with the Obama administration to adopt regulations, uh, and, and which ended up just becoming guidance documents that said, we could, in fact, do this. Uh, this happened at the end of the Obama administration. We provided testimony to the uh, Employee Benefits uh, EBSA and were able to get guidance and regulations. Uh, unfortunately, as everybody knows, we had a very rough four years. And uh, with Trump, uh, we saw Steve Bannon in the White House. And uh, from reporting from Gotham Gazette, we learned that uh, the top 10 list on Steve Bannon's whiteboard was stopping New York City from offering retirement to our low wage workers. And so uh, Trump and Bannon and Congress, it literally took an act of Congress, two of them, to stop New York City. And they passed House Joint Resolution 66 and 67 by Rep. Wahlberg and Rep. Rooney in March of 2017, signed by Trump in April to try to stop states and municipalities from offering uh, these protections. We've been fighting ever since. Uh, when Mayor de Blasio ran for president, this was legislation that he actually ended up uh, talking about on the in the national arena. And uh, that helped us get a hearing on the legislation. Uh, when we talk about retirement, uh, the National Institutes of Retirement Security estimates that New York, the United States of America is facing a $14 trillion retirement deficit. That is the difference between how much seniors have and how much they need and how much is likely to end up being something that the public uh, tax dollars are going to have to supplement. And so today, as we move forward uh, under the uh, Biden administration, uh, I'm incredibly excited it's also worth noting that uh, the state had said they would do this back in 2018. Three years later, it still hasn't happened. The board still hasn't constituted. And in this case, the city council, as often, is leading the city, the state, and the nation by doing this. Uh, the great news here is that other jurisdictions are doing this. When we have the hearing, Oregon showed us the way and how they've been able to do it. They've seen this program explode with participation from particularly low wage workers, and it's been a godsend for them. Their program is only growing uh, with minimal risk to their uh, municipality, 
And it's also been incredibly helpful to the workers who now have a mechanism for savings. This will cost small businesses nothing. All they have to do is auto enroll the folks when they come in, it'll be deducted from the payroll automatically. Uh, and it should be something that can help a lot of people save. And if they choose to withdraw, uh, Oregon presents an interesting model where the first contributions are actually deposited into a cash savings account uh, so that it can be withdrawn without any liability. So I'm urging my colleagues to vote yes on uh, these two bills, which are working together. And I just want to thank uh, Chair Miller uh, as a labor leader, as somebody who has fought for pensions for his workers uh, at uh, his, his uh, ATU local and uh, for his partnership and brotherhood in this legislation and so much else. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. Thank you for your leadership, your relentless and, and, and stick-to-itiveness on this one as well. And, and, and thank you for reminding us that we were joined by our public advocate, now Attorney General, in this struggle to bring uh, retirement savings to uh, those who aren't afforded those benefits at, at the current time. So thank you for your leadership. Uh, William? Yes, sir, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, do, do, does any of uh, the members have anything to add to the legislation before we take a vote? Is, is, is that a raise? Uh, uh, no hands raised, no comments. With that, I ask that we take a call on the vote. Sure. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil service and labor, proposed introductions 888A and 901A. Both items are coupled. Chair Miller. Proudly vote aye. Rosenthal. Vote aye. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. Adams. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Council Member Moya. I vote aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Dinowitz. I vote aye. Ulrich. Good morning, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. And that is a full committee, Mr. Chair. I thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to thank the, the committee for everyone for being here so early to take this important vote. I know that we all have uh, very long days. Once again, I want to uh, welcome Council Member Denowitz to the committee. Uh, we, we, uh, thank we, you. We, we do important work on behalf of our city's workforce here at the committee. And uh, we are uh, pleasure to have you here. Uh, to join us in, in our struggle to support workers. Um, this uh, work, this legislation will go a long way to support our private sector workforce and, and, and quite frankly, uh, hopefully take some of the burden off of supporting our future retirees uh, because this is afforded to them now. So with that, I thank everyone for being here. Uh, once again, I thank staff, committee staff, and my staff, uh, as well as Councilman Michaelo's staff uh, with that, I will call this hearing is now adjourned. <laughs>